there are so many people, particularly younger entrepreneurs, that are, are scared to talk about their idea. They think that someone's gonna steal their idea. Ideas are worthless. Execution is the only thing that matters. <laughs> My co-founder in this business is a, a guy whose name is Dan Gilbert, and Dan is the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers from the NBA, and I never met Dan, a very short of it is, Dan and I had the exact same idea independently, which was to create a stock market for sneakers. I have the exact same story as every other 40-year-old sneakerhead, which is, I grew up playing basketball, Michael Jordan played, I always wanted Air Jordans. My mom would never buy me Air Jordans. As soon as I got some money, I bought Air Jordans. Like, we all have the exact same story. I had created a side business that was a price guide for sneakers. And this company, which was called Campless, was the Kelly Blue Book, or Beckett for sneakers. And so for probably about a good 18 months, I was talking to everybody. You know, the basic reaction that we got was, and we want to take your data and do X, Y, and Z in our business. And fair enough, right? Like I didn't think Nike was gonna change your whole business and build a, a stock market. All we were doing was analyzing the sneaker marketplace that existed to understand what are sneakers actually worth. Well, if you understood asset pricing, if you understand portfolio construction, then perhaps you could create an actual stock market for sneakers. Early on, I was, start, I was running Campus on the side while I was working at IBM. I was a strategy consultant at IBM and uh, Campus was a nights and weekends thing. And then I met Dan in April of 2015. And I present this idea that I literally pitched to everyone else in the sneaker industry. And he and his team look at me with pure shock. It doesn't really register at first why. And they say, yeah, that is exactly what we want to do. Build a stock market for sneakers. And we joined forces and, and took Campus and turned that into StockX, the marketplace. The stock market has been the most efficient form of commerce for 200 years. And all we did was take these commodities, stocks and bonds, oil and gas, and point it to new commodities, to sneakers, to streetwear, and watches and handbags. So that feeling early on when pitching the larger idea to Nike and Adidas and, and eBay and, and Complex and Foot Locker, um, and the rejection then is not dissimilar to the rejection now, which is that it's okay that you don't understand why this is happening, it's new. There's a moment where um, at, on your entrepreneurial journey, when the companies that you're working on start to have a different level of success where you get asked, what would you tell your earlier self? What would you recommend? What, you know, what are the lessons you would learn? And what's interesting is, um, I don't know if I would have done too much differently, but the one piece of advice that becomes more and more true the more that I look back on it, ideas are worthless. Execution is the only thing that matters, you know, and that is probably never more true than to look back and say, like, why did I even get on the phone and, and tell this random billionaire who I'd never met and had no ties to secret industry at all about this idea that I had that I thought could be this big idea where I was like, oh, maybe he's going to steal it and go like, that just, that just doesn't happen. And, um, and to be able to do that and just go and talk to everybody about everything is like, that's how things happen. You figure out who to work with. You figure out, you know, who to collaborate with. Your idea changes and it improves so that you can go out and actually execute against it. Because, you know, again, execution is really the only thing that matters.